All right, everybody, RMJ Movie Reviews back again. And now I come with my uh, other crime movie review, uh, the 1985 underrated cult classic, To Live and Die in L.A., uh, starring William Peterson and William Dafoe. And it's directed by William Freakin, who directed The Exorcist, The Hunted with Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Cruising, starring Al Pacino, uh, Tons of other other thrillers. Uh, Jade, if anybody remembers that movie starring David Crusoe. We all know what a great movie that is. Uh, to Live and Die in L.A. tells the story of a Secret Service agent played by William Peterson and William Defoe, who plays uh, actually a guy who's a, a counterfeiter. He's a counterfeiter and a, a counter, excuse me, counterfeiter makes fake money and he's like an art dealer and he's into kind of weird stuff. And uh, basically, William Defoe murders William Peterson's partner, and the whole movie is William William Peterson's uh, relentless pursuit to take down William Defoe. This movie's a trip, man. Uh, one of the cool things about this movie that I really like about it is you want to use the term "gray." This movie is completely gray. There, there really is no like when I tell you the setup, you think that like it's a typical 1985 cops and robbers thing, but what I love about it is the you know counterfeit like counterfeit is fake money so it appears to be real but what it's not and that's kind of the theme of this movie is that everything and everybody is not what it appears to be everything is is twisted or turned or or, or just not what it everything is turned on its head it's not everything is not what it appears to be everything is backwards uh, one of the coolest things about this movie is like I was saying, all the characters are totally great. Like, as the movie kind of proceeds on, you know, William Peterson is very... This is young William Peterson, too. I think he was 34 or 35 in this film. But, um, you know, William Peterson, CSI, they were the first actor on CSI. But um, this dude is like really alpha male, really adrenaline junkie type of dude. And as the movie progresses, you're at first you're like, oh, this is this is what you're supposed to do. Kick open the door, the sunglasses. Yeah, we got to get everybody. But as the movie progresses, you're like, this dude uh, doesn't have them all. You know, this is, he's a bad dude. You know, and I don't mean like Michael Jackson bad. Like, I'm bad. I mean, like, he's a not a decent human being. You know, this guy uh, has an informant who works for him who's a woman. And, like, he's not just getting information with her. Like, he's banging her brains out for information. And he's paying her. And, you know, she tells him. She's like, I don't think I could do this anymore. And it, she's like, she's like, how do you feel about that? And he's like, oh, well, I'll have your parole. He said, I'll have your parole revoked and, have, revoked and have you sent back to jail. It's like, this dude is a scumbag, man. And, we, um, I'm sorry, William Defoe is kind of a little bit, although he's a murderer and he's a killer, he kind of is more uh, of an honorable and decent guy, even though he's a murderer and a crook, than William Peterson is. And William uh, Defoe kind of has this thing. He has this girlfriend, but, you know, it's kind of turned on his head because you don't really know if she's actually really into him. And it really turned, it seems like she might be lesbian, but she's with him for business purposes. Everything is twisted. And there's a lot of uh, visual tricks in this movie, too, where... You know, characters are walking in the rooms and you think it's being shot one way, but it's, it's actually in a mirror. It's their reflection. Or there's a scene where William Defoe is kissing what you think is a guy. You turn around and it's a girl. So it's, it's really a trip. And there's a spectacular car chase in this movie that William Freakin is known for. This car chase is absolutely awesome. It's totally edge of your seat. Uh, it, it, it's crazy, man. I'm not going to give it away. But again, it shows that you don't need all the CGI bling, 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 bling if you just take out a car and a camera and really good stunt people. You can get the adrenaline pumping that way, too. And also, uh, everybody in this movie is a backstabber. Just everybody. Every single last character is a backstabber. And it, it's totally awesome how everybody is kind of doing whatever they got to do to stab other people in the back. And another thing I like about this movie... Um, is there some really big twists and turns in the story that I'm not going to give away. But there's one in particular that comes in the second and the third act that was just like, damn. It caught me off guard when I first saw this picture. But uh, 
Outstanding performances across the board. Uh, this movie's got some creepy, icky kind of stuff in it. Really weird cuts. It has that 80s aesthetic to it that comes off as cheesy. You know, William Peterson has got the cowboy boots with the sunglasses and the leather coat. And it's, it's, it's funny to look at that time and listen to the cheesy 80s soundtrack. But it fits the movie very well. You can see a lot of those Miami Vice, Don 